Hi, I'm Ensemble Strider, and this is my Guardians of the Galaxy movie review, uh, which is produced by Marvel Studios and the whole Marvel uh, Marvel Studios cinematic universe. Now, let's just get one thing clear straight off the bat: if you have not seen any other of the Marvel cinematic universe movies, you can go into this and enjoy it completely free of any of the knowledge of the movies that have come before it which is one thing I was extremely grateful for there is not a slightest hint of spandex in this movie I for one was getting a bit of a uh, spandex sickness I was starting to get a little bit uh, put off by the whole superhero movie onslaught comic book movie onslaught that was going through at the moment it's just like all the goddamn time and um, I was starting to get a little weary of it and Captain America, uh, the second one, The Winter Soldier, being a political thriller and now Guardians of the Galaxy uh, this summer is... it's just refreshed things for me. It's really, um, it's really, really good. Um, so the whole, the whole feel to the movie, um, this is going to be spoiler free, is um, it's very high fantasy science fiction. Um, it's not a superhero movie, definitely high fantasy science fiction. If you lo like your science explained to you, you're not going to get that here. You get as much of an explosion as that's what it is. And I really like that sort of, um, that sort of uh, science fiction universe. This is the sort of um, science fiction universe like Star Wars. And I do believe that the new Star Wars movies that are in production could learn a lot from watching this film and learning what high fantasy science fiction should be. Um, it's, it's really quality stuff. Um, you know, you see strange locations that are interesting, strange aliens that are, um, are interesting and different. Um, although there is one or two uh, very human looking people um, for my uh, taste, you know, they just look human, not really alien. Um, so there was that, that was a little just out of taste for me. I would prefer a bit more alien in there if you understand what I mean. Um, so yeah, this is fantastic stuff. Does, it's great. Um, I really enjoyed it. The special effects are amazing. Um, I'm glad that the director, James Gunn, is it James Gunn? I'm pretty sure it's James Gunn. Um, when he went into this, he's like, I want to use um, practical physical effects as much as possible and special effects where I need special effects, it can't be done any other way. And when I heard this, I was like behind that whole um, 100% because sometimes we just get too many special effects and it, it ruins the immersion sometimes. You can clearly see what you're looking at is a computer generated image. And sometimes when you're watching it, watching a film with too much CGI, you, do, you sometimes do the, sit back and think, this is nice CGI. And at that moment, you're out of the film. You're not immersed in the film um, as much as you would like to be. Uh, so the fact that there's some practical effects in there really mixes things up and it's great. So let's get to the Guardians. I haven't been talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy themselves. Um, I'm going to have to start off with the the best of the group in my opinion, which is, um, is it Peter Quill? I always forget his last name, but Peter Quill, uh, the legendary Star-Lord. Uh, Chris Pratt sells this. He is amazing and I expect to see him in a lot of movies after this role. He does sells leading man. He oozes charisma off the screen. He's amazing. Absolutely amazing uh, in this role. Um, it's it's uh, the thing that I'm really amazed by. He's, he's not a bigger name. After this he's going to be everywhere. I can guarantee it. Uh, before he even speaks in the movie, just in the way he moves um, which I won't spoil the scene for you, but it, just in the way he moves, he he sells it, and you just get that this is like a Han Solo sort of um, you know scoundrel, space scoundrel sort of thing. Uh, very very good, um, and I loved his performance. Um, there is Gamora played by Zoe Saldana. Now it's a bit unfortunate for Zoe Saldana that when she came into this role, at least I think her last name is Saldana. I may have got it wrong. Apologies. Uh, if I did, but um, it's a bit unfortunate with the characters around her, she doesn't stand out as much as she should. This is just being perfectly honest. This is nothing to say about her acting skills. Her acting is great and fantastic. Um, it's the fact that her character just doesn't shine as much as some of the others um, that she's surrounded by. Um, it is un unfortunate that I wanted her to be so good as Gamora and 
if we're honest, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is becoming a bit of a sausage fest, and I wanted a woman to stand out and be powerful and great within this movie, and it's unfortunate that it, she, she does her best, the acting's great, but her character is flawed. I would, actually, when I left the cinema, I said, okay, what did I think of the performance? I need to name five things I found interesting about Gamora. I counted two and then couldn't think of any others, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, so that's those. Uh, Bradley Cooper, who voices Rocket Raccoon, is hysterical. You will laugh at this character more than any other. He's just fun. You know when he's on screen, there's something fun and entertaining going to be hap happening. Um, he sells the voice. I don't know where he got that voice from. I've heard Bradley Cooper speak numerous times. He sounds nothing like that, and it is, it's, it's great, it's good work. Um, Vin Diesel, this is the best acting role he's ever had, and he voices the walking tree Groot, and all he ever says is, I am Groot, all the way through the film, and it's the best role he's ever had. Let's be perfectly honest, Vin Diesel fans out there, he's not all that brilliant, okay? And this is the best role he's ever had. He's fun, he's entertaining, he's funny, and he's a perfect double team with Rocket Raccoon. I imagine that the action figures, when these come on sale in Christmas, uh, we're gonna see lots of, uh, lots of Iron Groot, uh, Groot being sold, uh, lots of Rocket Raccoon plushies being sold. I can see it now. Um, and fifth and um, finally is uh, Drax the Destroyer, played by Dave Bautista, who is of uh, WWE fame. Now, here's one thing I'm just going to make absolutely clear. For someone who has graduated from the WWE, Dave Bautista is hands down the best actor to come out of it. Now, I've said that. He's great. And he's playing the big guy, Drax the Destroyer, the indestructible, you know, the immortal, just the... It just, he's playing the big guy, the big, you know, the, the muscle. He's well spoken. He is very well spoken, and Dave Bautista is a good actor. Notice how I'm saying good, not great. There are a couple of he, um, a, a couple of uh, lines that are a bit hammy. Um, if he could have just played those down a bit, but it's nothing that you know is going to ruin your enjoyment in this film at all. Um, I'm just going to stress that because he's, he does a good job. Um, it's just that there's a couple of lies in there. He does deal, um, uh, you know, with, he serves those up with some extra ham in there. Um, if he could have just dialed those down a little bit, that would have been great. Of course, the villains have their own great uh, cast lineup too. I don't want to spoil too much about the villains because it, it kind of goes into uh, spoiler territory. So I'm only going to cover the one we saw in um, in the trailer, which is um, Nebula, played by Karen Gillan. Not her best performance. If I'm perfectly honest, I would like to say because you know she's a British actress and she's a former companion of the Doctor. I love Doctor Who, and I want to say she's fantastic. It's not her best. Um, she's not really on screen for all that long. It's nothing that's gonna break her enjoyment of, of your movie. I didn't think she was brilliant in this. I just thought she was okay. I guess it's due to the character she's playing, and things you learn about the character as you go through the movie. Um, th that maybe it's, that's the way she delivered the lines, the way she did. Um, but it's nothing that you um, will, um, you know, it's, it's nothing that's going to spoil your enjoyment for you. Um, yeah, so the the entire cast, um, Michael Rooker is in there, I'm not going to spoil who he plays, but he's fantastic. Um, I'm not a big fan of Michael Rooker, um, who's, um, what's his name, he's in The Walking Dead, um, he's in season one more prominently in three, I believe. Um, I'm not a big fan of Michael Rooker, but in this, He's great, um, and I enjoyed watching him on the screen. And he's actually very charismatic uh, on the on the the things I was seeing from him. I was just I was happy to be see um, to, when when he was on screen. I was I was sold by his performance. Um, so yeah, I wasn't just like oh I don't really like Michael Rooker as an actor. I, he he was great in this. I found him very very enjoyable. Um, there's one thing I'm gonna put at the end because it's kind kind of a little bit spoily. Um, so overall, the Guardians, the people they cla um, clash against, um, and the backdrops, they all just mesh and the whole movie is 
does humour and action, although it starts very quietly, it starts very understated, quietly and just like, and then it hits you with the heavy sci-fi stuff, um, and it does hit you all at once with it. And everything just meshes together well, it's just, the, there's the humour, the action, the fantasy, there is a heavy fantasy element here, okay? I always said Star Wars is a fantasy movie and not a sci-fi movie, okay? Just so we're on the level here. Fantasy and science fiction, and it all meshes beautifully to make this uh, summer film that is gen genuinely entertaining and I want to go see again. Um, I mean, I've been to see a lot of this summer's blockbusters. I went to see Godzilla, I left disappointed. I went to see X-Men Days of Future Past, I was entertained, I didn't feel like I'd, um, like I'd wasted my money. Guardians of the Galaxy, I loved it. I've been on board for this since it got announced. When I saw the first trailer, I was like, cool, uh, I'm behind this and I want to see the, this movie. And it, everyone was always saying this is a risk by Marvel. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy as a movie is a risk. And I was thinking, why are you not seeing what I'm seeing? This looks to be one of the best movies that Marvel has produced. I'm going to leave that up for real fans to say if this is the best film um, Marvel has just produced. Uh, a lot of people seem to think it's Captain America the Winter Soldier. I personally was more entertained by this movie than I was Captain America the Winter Soldier, okay? But that is personal preference. You comic book fans, if they're into Captain America, they may have found that, uh, that film more entertaining over Guardians of the Galaxy. So, okay, um, so yeah, definitely go see this movie. It is worth your time, it is worth your money. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit one thing before you go, before you go from the thing, don't click away. Do not watch the end credit sequence. I'm going to discuss why in a second. Do not just go now. Click off the video. Do not watch the end credit sensor sequence. Okay, the post credit scene. Don't see it. Walk out the cinema. Okay, now you can click off because I'm going to talk spoilers. Okay, Thanos is in the movie. Thanos is voiced by an absolute god, and I've no idea who he is. Um, I was unfortunate to Google it just before I started recording, and I've forgotten since. Um, but his voice when he speaks, my god! You just think, this guy's going to rip the Avengers apart in the Avengers 3 when he finally turns up. Um, <laughs> I've forgotten who it is, but he's, 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 he's amazing. He really is. He just... When he speaks, especially if you're watching it in the cinema, watch in the cinema, don't wait for DVD, and um, you're getting bombarded by the sound of him talking, it's just like, wow. Um, yeah, so Thanos is in it, Thanos is great. Now the post credit scene, do not watch it, and here's why. Now canon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is Howard the Duck. Let that sink in, sink in. I'm sorry if you stayed because you didn't know what I was going to say, okay? But in the post credit sequence, all you get is Howard the fucking duck. Walk out. Walk out now. Marvel Cinematic Universe canon, Howard the duck. Okay? That's been my review of Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm sorry it's not all that long. I would love to talk about everything in this movie. I really would. And just just really just tell you everything about it but that defeats the purpose um, of me just saying go and see it go and see it go and see it because you won't be disappointed in this movie uh, I swear to god just go and see it it's a high fantasy science fiction action romp and that's all you need uh, you don't need any Marvel Comics um, knowledge going in this you don't need any Marvel Cinematic Universe knowledge going into this you just sit down you sit, sit back and enjoy and you don't need to be looking for references to anything like this could be Avengers 2 knowledge or this could be Avengers 3 there's the obvious things like of course Thanos turns up but you don't need any Marvel Cinematic Universe knowledge to enjoy this so you could just go in enjoy it I intend to send my children on Saturday to go and see this film it was just it was that good um, so yeah that's where I stand on the whole thing just go and see it I've been Seven Strider and I should go